Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. Today's video has been like months and months and months in the making and I've been waiting to talk about it until I had some sort of resolution or some sort of answer but it's an ongoing thing and I'm just ready to talk about it because I'm ready to move on into an, like another stage with the white tree frogs and a new enclosure and like the enclosure has to be adapted to the issues I'm having so I'd rather just like talk about it now. I have talked about it on Instagram and Twitter so if you follow me there, then you've already seen all the information about this, just not all compiled in one video. If you're unaware, I've had issues with my White's Tree Frog Coco. So back in, I think it was March, I welcomed home four White's Tree Frogs. They went through a normal quarantine period and then they were introduced into a 36 by 18 by 18 bioactive. That was never their long-term setup, simply for the fact that like once I got them, I realized how far they can jump. So I always planned to upgrade them to a larger enclosure, which is sitting off to the side and is almost ready for them to go in. But they've spent the last like, I don't know, five or six months back in quarantine because Coco is a handful. So let me just start with this. When I got them, I noticed that Durian had fluid retention in his back legs. Now, I was told that this is something that happened as a result of him being on antibiotics the year before, which uh, was in November, for a bacteria infection. Durian is actually a rehome from someone else. So Durian came from a pet store had a home with a person, was rehomed to the person that rehomed him to me. With the person that rehomed them to me, Durian was added to this group of three frogs who are Coco and Barry and Kiwi. Durian is like a bit bigger, he looks a bit different, and my vet speculates that he's not only wild caught but a lot older. And of course, it's not hard to speculate wild caught. He came from a pet store and he just looks like <laughs> gigantic. <laughs> so anyways, the frogs had been housed together for months without issue, except for Durian having the bacterial infection, which happened in a prior bioactive. So then they had gone back into like a quarantine type of setup. And then they were rehomed to me in that quarantine type of setup. And so Durian's issues with the bacterial infection had resolved, except for the fluid retention in his back legs. And then he was rehomed to me. And then I took him to the vet, like right after the quarantine period ended. And I also took Coco because Coco started having issues. So Coco is, is high energy, like Coco is next level energy. And instead of jumping like a normal frog, you know, like this, or like this, or like this, Coco launches like a rocket, like a outer space, launches straight up at the top of the enclosure. And he would do this at night, of course, because during the day they sleep and they're chill. So I didn't know until he got a little bit of nose rub. So I was treating his nose rub with a little bit of Neosporin and also I completely replaced the screen top that was like a metal screen with a more flexible screen so that it was softer. It was a, like a really soft mesh. So he still had airflow and he still had UVB, but he didn't have the danger of the screen. It's not even sharp. None of the other frogs had this problem, just him. After like a week, of the little neosporin on the tip of his nose. His nose was healing up, it was looking a lot better. But then he started developing these like small bumps underneath the back of his leg. He had like two on his right back leg and he also had one on his front left wrist. So I took him to the vet and I took Durian to the vet as well. This is at the beginning of COVID by the way. So I was sitting in the car for this whole appointment, but my vet is really great. So I was like completely fine with her handling them without me around. So both of them were assessed and she was like, we're just gonna start them out with antibiotics. Seeing Durian's legs right from the get go, she was like, Durian looks really old and it's definitely not fluid retention from antibiotics because that shouldn't last more than like a week or two. And it had been months. So she was like, it could be some sort of organ failure or decline of that organ that caused the um, legs to fill the fluid and retain that fluid. And she also said it could be from a lack of UVB because they were being kept without UVB before I got them. So she said that it could be that as well. But just from the get go, she was like, that's what durian looks like. And then with Coco, she wasn't entirely sure. We thought perhaps parasites, but we treated with antibiotics to see if it would go away. After the course of antibiotics, it did not go away. And then I brought fecals in, which was 
very fun because the first fecal that I brought in, my vet was out of the office and they like neglected to tell me before I brought it in. So the samples had to be thrown away because they don't last, you know, because she was gone for the whole holiday weekend or whatever. So then I had to bring in more samples and both my frogs would not poop on a consistent basis like one of them would poop and then days later the other one would poop and i wasn't trying to go to the vet back and forth back and forth so i was trying to wait till i got one for both of them but they wouldn't do that for me so i had to just bring durians in and then bring cocos in another day now the interesting thing is coco's fecal came back no parasites durian's fecal came back parasites then she sent the pictures of what was on the slide off to her parasitologist to get a second opinion that took a long time to get that second opinion unfortunately but they confirmed there was two types of parasites but keep in mind coco's fecal came back no parasites so we started them on a round of ivermectin which we had to dilute with water and then had to apply to their skin like transdermally same way the antibiotics were applied and then that happened once every two weeks for four rounds so on once two weeks later again two weeks later again two weeks later it was so on and so forth so that's when things got interesting because at this point the frogs are back in quarantine of course and coco after the first ivermectin dose like i would say 10 days afterwards coco's little bumps the two of them opened up and this white stringy material came out and so when i told my vet about that i took pictures and sent them to her and she's like bring coco in so i brought coco in and she assessed the two bumps and like did a little bit of um uh, like rubbing on them and then put it on a slide and then looked underneath to see the tissue and then she said i would really like to get a sample of this so if you can next time one opens up if one does here's a slide and here is a vial create a wet mount and you know do all this and she gave me all the instructions so she said next time it happens bring it in i want to look at it so i created a wet mount with a q-tip i believe that's what it's called don't come for me but the next time one opened up which happened on his second dose of ivermectin it's like literally like every like 10 days after his ivermectin dose, they, these would open up. So I took a q-tip and just gently gathered the material out of the, the hole, which basically all came out in one piece. Like I said, it was stringy, like it all just came out together. And then I put that in some like solution in that little vial. And then I also rubbed it a little bit on a like a slide and then put that in a little container and brought it back to the vet. And she looked at them and she said, What's interesting is that it shows inflammation. So it was probably his body's reaction to dead parasites. So like the parasites were just chilling in his body dead because of the ivermectin and then his body had to expel them. That's what it was. Gross. Once Coco started the ivermectin, it basically was just like bump after bump that would come up on his skin. And as soon as I saw a bump, it would only be a few days before it opened up and then it would only be a few days until it healed over completely. And so here you can see like they got bigger and like nastier stuff came out as time went on. At this time, because he was having sores, he was also on antibiotics while being on ivermectin. I would send pictures to my vet like every single morning of his condition and so we could keep in close contact about what we should do with Coco. And he didn't have any more bumps open up with the exception of this one up right above his leg when he was on his last dose of ivermectin. There was actually one point in time when he first started treatment. It was like two or three days into his being on ivermectin where he just stopped moving completely and for like two days and I was for sure thinking he was gonna die, but he didn't. And then he hasn't done that since. He's still active, he's still eating. I finished all the rounds of ivermectin with all the frogs, including Coco. Uh, Coco's went on treatment longer than theirs. And like I said, they've been in quarantine. It's literally a tub with paper towel and a bowl of water. Like it is the most basic, boring quarantine it possibly could be. Despite all of this cleaning and keeping things, you know, quarantine level clean, despite the ivermectin, the antibiotics, oh, and x-rays. 
I also got x-rays for them, just to be sure there wasn't something else going on. Despite all of that, Coco's issues have persisted. Fortunately, the large bump that was on his front hand has completely gone away. And he doesn't have bumps that like open up anymore, but what will happen is they will start to develop under the skin and I've had to start treating with ivermectin again. I think that because they're notoriously hard to get rid of, because they can live in the other frogs, because they can live in the environment, what I have to do is just keep it at a stable level. So like whenever he starts to like have a flare up basically is when I have to dose him with ivermectin again just to kill them off. But Unfortunately, I don't think I'll ever be rid of them. None of the other frogs are having the same issues as Coco. None of the other frogs are having any issues at all. Durian's fluid-filled legs have never gone away. We think it does have something to do with the fact that there may be something internally like a calcium deficiency or even like an organ that just isn't functioning as well as it might once have because Durian is a bit older. It, it's hard to tell. All four of them have been treated for these parasites. None of them have shown any like physical signs of having like a parasite infestation, except Coco. What's interesting is that Coco's fecal wasn't present for parasites, but Durian's was. And so what we think is that Durian has always had parasites because Durian is wild caught, but that Durian has been able to like live with them in kind of like a a tolerance of them because a lot of animals that are wild caught will have parasites and it typically doesn't become a problem until their immune system is compromised or like they're living in really dirty conditions or something like that and so what we think is durian is like the host frog he brought the parasites to the other frogs and that coco had a reaction because that nose rub allowed him to just get them into his body really quick, like whether he got feces on his nose or whether it's because he shares water with durian, obviously, because, you know, water in the enclosure. Um, I don't know, but I imagine that that is the way because it literally happened right after. So whether it's because they were living in a bioactive, which allows the parasites to live in the environment, but of course I didn't know they had parasites because they weren't showing any signs prior, or if it's because Coco got the nose rub and then that allowed a little bit of like a compromised immune system or it allowed more parasites to get in directly to him. I, I don't know for sure. We, we don't really know why Coco compared to the other frogs is having such a strong reaction to them. But either way, Coco is still alive. Coco is kicking. Coco eats. Coco jumps. Um, Coco is relatively normal in behavior. And so because this doesn't seem to be an issue that's going away anytime soon, I decided to put them in their upgraded enclosure, but it's not going to be what I had dreamt of for them. There's not going to be a big background like they had in their previous enclosure. There's not going to be anything like silicone to the sides, like I had those little rocks silicone to the sides before that they love to perch on. They can't have that. There has to be stuff that can easily be removed, easily be washed, easily be placed in the freezer, which kills parasites, or placed in the oven, which kills parasites. So what I went with, I will share in a separate video, but this video has to come out first because the way that I have to house my white tree frogs, which by the way, you could house any white tree frogs like this. Like it's, it's gonna be good for them. Like I'm really happy they're gonna have this enclosure. But it's just not what I dreamt of, if that makes sense. Like, it's not all out as I would have wanted. It's still pretty cool, though. I actually had to have a specialized custom-built enclosure to meet the size requirements and to meet the strip of UVB because Coco likes to fly himself to the top of the enclosure, which caused the nose rub. So I had to say, I need a mesh strip this exact size so that I can allow UVB into the enclosure, but I can't have a full screen top because he will smack himself. I got an enclosure that had all black sides. That way there was no risk of nose rub because sometimes white street frogs can like rub their faces along glass because they're trying to get out. So the enclosure has all black sides and there's only one like clear part, which is the door. They have plants that are fake, of course, and then they have manzanita wood. So like I said, I will share their enclosure in a video. It'll probably come right after this one or like pretty close after this one. So just keep in mind that this has to be seen first. I'm actually gonna say that in the tour video as well because this 
this is a huge preface to why the enclosure is the way it is and so yeah i've been doing the best i can with the white tree frogs you know antibiotics x-rays parasite medication quarantine for months um you know it's just it's been a lot it's been um disheartening and i waited years to have white tree frogs because like they seemed a little bit daunting to me because everyone always says they're a beginner frog but i always see people keeping them in really different ways like in terms of husbandry and that was daunting to me because that means there's so many different ways things can go right and so many different ways things can go wrong when i started sharing the parasite issues that coco was having a lot of people reached out to me and said my frog had that and it died the next day my frog had that and it died the next week and so that was really kind of traumatic for me because i was just waiting for him to die but he hasn't he's like doing fine and he hasn't lost any weight he's still eating he's still active i had hoped that i would have a better resolution when it came to filming this video that's why i waited so long to film it but there just isn't an answer. I don't have an answer for when Coco's issues will go away, if ever. I don't have an answer for what, why exactly Durian's legs are fluid filled. Um, but being treated with ivermectin didn't fix it, so it's not parasite related. And like my vet said from the get-go, she believes that it has to do something with like an organ that just isn't functioning at 100% because Durian's old. Again, I don't know for sure, but I hope that this helps somebody who might be having a similar issue with one of their pets. Um, you just, you have to do the best you can and hope that things go in a positive direction. I've been pretty fortunate with one, having an extremely great exotic vet, and two, having a lot of pets that so far, especially considering their special needs and rescues, that I haven't had too many problems. Like this is my first problem with parasites. I've never dealt with them before. So thank you for the experience, Coco. But as frustrating as this has been, I just try to remember that like, this is part of pet keeping. It could be worse. I have Coco still, Coco is doing fine. The other frogs are doing fine. Kiwi and Berry are just like, absolute dolls durian is an actual mouth hole like that dur that's all durian is durian has the biggest mouth and like uh it's amazing the white tree frogs are great aside from this troubles i have absolutely loved having them i think that they're the goofiest loveliest they're literally just mouth holes like they are mouths with a body attached like that's what they are and they're just they're lovely and i'm happy to have them even with all of the struggles. Keep your eyes peeled for a video of where I showcase the White Tree Frog enclosure. If you're interested in seeing it early, I do have a Patreon that I post early access to videos and things like that for. So if you're interested, that is available in the links below. Otherwise, I will see you guys in the next one. Oh yeah, please like, subscribe, hit the notification bell, all that good stuff, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye!